True Life Crime Week uh, is going to start on July 13th on MTV. The host, Domiti Pango, is joining us, a Chicago guy who's doing big things in New York. Um, this premiere episode that we're going to start off the week with is just crazy because it starts with the murder of two women. It was one of the craziest cases I'd seen, and the end is going to be very shocking. I don't want to spoil it, but on the way to finding the actual suspect, there's a moment in which the detectives think that one of the victim's father was responsible for it because he was so against their queer relationship. It was a couple, it was two women. And, you know, just seeing the, the crime scene photos, the way their bodies were disposed of, you know, I really wanted to make sure that I told the story about their fullness of life, who these women were, and hopefully bring some awareness to the issues surrounding their lives as well. A lot of the crimes that are here are all focusing on people in their teens, people in their 20s. Tell us a little bit about why that was important for the show. Yeah, I think it's important for young people to know that, you know, sometimes we live, you know, we, we've been young, we've all been out here partying and, and having fun, but you find out that, you know, we need to take things seriously. We need to take precautions. We need to be careful about sharing our locations online. Social media has made it even easier for predators to attack these different young folks, especially our young women. You know, we have a case involving Lauren Ag, uh, which happens on July 14th. And we try to dig into whether this was an accident where she'd fallen off of a cliff at a festival where she was camping with friends or if there was some foul play involved. And we talk about partying and someone loses their life. You know, it sounds like one in a million that it couldn't happen, but Lord forbid it could happen to those we love the most. And so I hope this show just makes us a little bit more aware, more careful about what we do, more cautious about who we trust and uh, more intentional about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we thought it was important to focus on young people. Our audience is young people. We, we got to talk straight to them. Oh, exactly. Now you just mentioned that, and I do want to touch on that right now. What advice would you have for people? You know, especially people are showing their vaccination cards and they were telling them, you know, people can take your information off of there or people are at a festival, you know, people are coming out of quarantine and want to show where they're at or, you know, show something, but that can also lead to a da very dangerous path. What advice do you have, especially from doing the show that you would say to all young people? Oh, a couple of things. You know, if you're out and you're not exactly sure about the group that you're with, share your location with somebody. If you have an iPhone, share your location. If you have an Android, figure out uh, how to share Google locations or any of those apps with your friend circle, with your close friend circle. I say for safety precautions, you don't have to show and tweet and post everywhere you are in real time. You know, take that video, kick it, go to the next spot that you're hanging out at and then post the video so that folks can't track where you are in, in real time. You know, these are some of the things that I've seen that has led to some, some unfortunate circumstances. And just lastly, you know, if something happens, if a loved one goes missing, you don't have to wait 48 hours before you can contact police. That is a big misconception. One of the main things that happens is families think they have to wait two days. You don't. You can call the police right now. You can begin to begin that investigation early. Get the ball rolling early as soon as your gut tells you something is wrong. Now, the show, the, the you know, season one started off with a very, you know, personal story, especially, you know, for you and I both in Chicago with uh, Kanika Jenkins, who had died mysteriously. If you go on the MTV website, you can see the whole episode. Um, but what was it like to start off the series with, with that story? You know, it felt good to kick it off at home. And it set a precedent for the rest of the season because I didn't want to do the type of show where I parachute in, I look at a case, I start digging at, you know, digging into these things, but I don't feel closely connected with it. And when you look at the Kanika Jenkins case, how closely I felt connected to the city, how when I'm talking to, you know, Bri Bri, I'm, we, we have a connection. You know, you don't see me on camera, but I'm crying and she's crying. And for the rest of the season, I needed to ask myself the question, why am I, why is Doma T. Pongo telling this particular story? And I had to really do some soul searching with each and every person to connect with the victim on that level. And it, it wouldn't have, that president wouldn't have been set if it didn't start off right at home, right in the city of Chicago with Kanika, who could have been my little cousin, my little sister. Uh, it was hard emotionally, but I think that it makes for better story, storytelling as a result. Oh, exactly, exactly. People can go to the MTV website and go see that whole episode there. Uh, but you're a Chicago guy. I want to ask you, have you been able to come back here at all uh, this, you know, last month, this month, any, any plans here? Man, I come back a lot. I come back a lot. Actually, I just, I just celebrated my birthday, June 18th uh, in Chicago. I went to some Juneteenth barbecues, 
man, I parlay, man, I party. I always go back and visit. I used to work at WGN. And so I always try to go back and visit my WGN radio family as well. But I get back to the city as often as I can. What Favorite spot to, to eat food, or to hang out in over the summer? You know, what would you tell people? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, we got to go Harold's. I, when I get to town, I got to do some Harold's chicken. Um, I used to live over in the east, so I got to get uh, some Harold's from 73rd and Stony Island. Close as one of my old house. Need a slice of Giordano's, uh, preferably the one in Hyde Park. And I also need some hot Crunchy Curls chips. Chicago state where you can only get hot Crunchy Curls in Chicago. I leave with a bag every time I come home, man. All right, that, that is my mission. So the next time we talk, I will have had that and I will go ahead and we can, we can chat a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it.